Um, so I feel like it's important to say that I was um, 24 when I got into it because I know there's like a stigma around um, age and like the type of person that would get into this sort of situation because like I don't think it matters at all who you are or what like your age anyone can end up in this kind of situation and it'd be really unexpected sort of thing so um for me yeah I was 24 and um I like had low self-esteem and all of those kind of things and I was going through depression quite a bit when I first met this person and then um it never starts out like from my experience and I feel like a lot of other people has also said the same thing that it doesn't start out being abusive like you don't think that it's gonna go in that direction which is why when people say why don't you just leave or just get out like what are you doing kind of thing you don't um like you never expected it to go that way in the first place sort of thing so then when things happen it becomes harder to leave and stuff so yeah so I was 24 really depressed and just unhappy and then I met this person that had like the same interests as me with music and stuff and was like that's kind of how we connected is through mutual interests so it seemed normal to me at the time and then it kind of just progressed into um just little things that he would say where it would be like not insults at first but it would just be like belittling things to make you feel like you're not good enough and like you need to try harder and do better for him kind of thing and and then that kind of progresses into the insults so I feel like it's important to understand that it doesn't just start out with like violence or like something really drastic and obvious and in your face it starts out with just little things that they would say and things that would kind of put you down and make you even question your own decisions and what you're trying to do and everything and just how you live your life like he would just even say little things about my family and stuff just to kind of plant doubt in yourself and make you just feel not good enough basically and then that would progress into insults and outright calling you names and stuff but by that point you've already started to believe those things because he's already telling you that you're not good enough so then you start believing it and then when he'll outright tell you that you're not good enough you now believe it because that seed's already planted if that makes sense so it's just like a emotional build-up of um manipulation I guess and like emotional abuse I feel like the emotional side of it happens first and it's also for me the worst part because that's the part that kind of stays like years after you've left kind of thing and there's a lot of the um like trauma that you have to work through afterwards and even during as well so yeah it just kind of progresses into insults and a lot of um just like degrading words and things and then in my situation it was um like throwing things at me and stuff like he would chuck water over me and things like that so it kind of gradually over the months and we were living together as well so just like over the months of being in the same space and dealing with the emotional things constantly and like walking on eggshells not knowing how to behave and like you would anticipate his mood kind of thing and it would make you adjust your own behavior so that you're automatically not doing certain things that you used to do because you know it's going to annoy them like you already know not to do that sort of thing like it really changes your behavior and your whole demeanor and everything and then then the like violence starts and it progresses into more serious things but because you're already feeling unworthy you're already like pulled away from your family and just doubting everything about yourself that it's easy for them to then bring in the violence and just make it a whole like escalate it a whole other level and then you really feel like you can't leave because you just have this person like everything that they're telling you is true kind of thing like you really believe that so I don't know for me it felt like the walls were caving in like there was just no way out at all and it, it took a long, long time for me to leave. Like not a long time, but a long um, amounts of attempts to leave. I, I couldn't even tell you how many times I did leave and went back 
it was probably like in the double figures. I don't even know how many times I even um, moved all my furniture out of the place that we were living in and moved it all back in a few days later. Like it was just ridiculous how many times. And I did see a survey um, after I'd left properly. I did come across a survey where it said like it takes um, on average seven times for people to leave and actually stick with it which seven times is quite high. So that kind of blew my mind a little bit, but mine was probably even higher than that. So it is um, like, it's a mental battle and people don't realize the intensity of that to where it can take you seven times before you really stick to it because you're so invested in the person and you just feel like that's your life. Like that's all you have kind of thing. And that's all you're worth as well. So yeah that's kind of how it progressed and then it literally feels like your your mind is kind of caving in like your world is caving in so you just can't see anything else and that's all you can see as the impossible I guess <laughs> so yeah and that's why I kind of like empathize with so many people that go through it and also that go through it even worse than I did because like I know that the violence can get very very extreme with certain situations so like I can't even imagine to be honest and the way that I left was um I'd kind of like shut all my family out and hadn't told them what was happening and I knew that the only way for me to really stick to it was to tell my mom like I literally knew there was no other way that I would stick to it because I tried so many times and then he would message me he would apologize we would end up speaking and I'd feel like I'm obligated to go back so I knew the only way was for me to tell my mom because then she wouldn't allow him to come anywhere near the house. Like she wouldn't let me leave. So I just ended up when I reached that point where it was time, I decided to just tell her and he'd gone away to see his family. It was over the Christmas period and he'd gone away. So I knew I was safe and I decided to tell her what had been going on. And she was like, he's never ste stepping foot in this house again. Like, that is it <laughs> but it got to the point where I was ready to do that and I know that it can take a while before you even get to that point and if I hadn't got to that point in myself then I probably wouldn't have left and I probably wouldn't have told her so I know it's different for everyone but that is just what happened with me and how I managed to leave eventually <laughs> but that situation went on for a year so I was in it for a year and then I finally got out of it and then afterwards it took a bit of time um like we spoke a little bit afterwards and in the end I just blocked him on everything because it was not like every time you speak to the person you want to go back and you feel guilty you feel like you've abandoned them and like you're being a bad person you've let them down so I had to cut off communication otherwise I would have just carried on going back and forth which is exactly what had happened before I would end up speaking to them feeling guilty and going back so I think cutting off communication is essential, which I also know can be difficult. Like if you're in a situation where you have children or you're married or something like that, it can be even harder to cut communication. So I know that that might not work for everyone, but that's just what I had to do in that circumstance. And I feel like even if you did have children, like it can go through a third party rather than needing to be direct communication with you because it's easy to get sucked back in if you have to speak to them, to be honest. So, yeah. So then um, I spoke to him a little bit afterwards, then blocked. And then um, because we had lots of financial things together where he, I feel like financial abuse isn't really spoken about much either. And that's something that's huge. Um, so because he ran his own business and I worked in it, and essentially had to run it by myself because he would disappear and do all kinds of crazy things. So I would be like struggling trying to deal with this business and he would just spend all the, the money. So I wouldn't have any money and I didn't have a wage or anything. Um, so yeah, I relied on him completely for fi like finances. And that's definitely a major red flag when you, when it comes to um, abuse. So we also had to like deal with lots of debts and things that he obviously ran up and I lent him money as well. I emptied my whole savings and lent it to him, which he never paid back. Um, and then we also had like a, a flat together, 
which was in both of our names and we had a car that was leased in both of our names so I was tied to a lot of his debts that his company was paying for that I didn't have any money so um I had to fight to get out of them with the help of my mum like we were going back and forth through so many letters and emails and things trying to get them to remove my name from the debts because I didn't have any money and I was kind of coerced essentially into um, like taking these leases out because I didn't need the lease he wouldn't even let me drive the car but yeah I'm on the lease for his car you know and he took the car when we broke up so eventually they let me off the, um, the like they removed my name from the lease which was a blessing but I know that for some people they won't even do that it depends what kind of contracts and things you have so I know like you can be left with a lot of debt and a lot of like financial burden afterwards and have to repay it. I'm still paying the council tax because he never paid it. And yeah, so I've been paying that every month, even now, and this is three years later, I left three years ago. So I'm still paying off the council tax because he ran it up, um, but he wasn't paying it. So yeah, you can still be left with a lot of baggage afterwards. That does take a lot of time to not only heal from emotionally, but even financially. So I think it's really important to also pay attention to those kind of red flags and notice um, all of the different financial things you're having to take out for this person. But um, yeah, so after it all ended, I didn't speak to him until he crashed to the car which was like six months later so I hadn't spoke to him for six months and then he randomly called me and I'm not even joking like I was shaking when the phone call came through because I hadn't spoke to him in so long and um, I don't even know how he called me actually I think I might have blocked him on whatsapp and not blocked his number or something like that and he managed to call me and it turns out that he'd actually taken out car insurance in my name and I didn't know about it so it was at that point where he wanted me to claim on the insurance when I didn't even know he'd taken it out in my name and which would have obviously affected my own insurance and everything like the cost of it and stuff so I decided that was the time I needed to go to the police and yeah I went and gave a statement and um for fraud because he took the thing out in my name but also I decided to give a statement on all of the just some of the different situations that had happened, like the actual violence and things. I wanted to, um, like I, the main reason I chose to do it was because he has a um, child, not by me, like he already has uh, an ex-partner who has his child and I knew that he'd been violent to her. So I decided I needed to just make this statement so that if anything else were to happen with her, now that I'm completely gone, that will be on his record and they'll be able to see it. But I didn't press charges. I just wrote the like the statement thing with some of the situations that had happened just because I wanted it to be there. And because he'd taken insurance out in my name and I'd finally left and then I get like sucked back into it again. So yeah, that's kind of what led me to actually make a police statement. And then I don't think I heard from him at all after that. I just told him I wasn't making the claim and that was it, blocked his number again and never spoke to him again. So yeah, <laughs> that is like my long-winded um, story of domestic abuse. But um, I feel like advice if you're in it, it's gonna sound really weird, but I know for myself that the only way I would ever leave is if I decided that I wanted to leave. And I know that sounds like a bit awful, but nobody else can, save you nobody else can make you leave like my mum told me to leave so many times and she didn't even know the severity of it she just knew that I wasn't happy and she kept telling me to leave and I didn't and it, I feel like it doesn't matter how many times people say it when you're in it you're if you're not ready you're not gonna leave so if you're in it I, like it comes down to self-esteem and self-worth because they really do strip your whole sense of self and basically destroy it so you have to be able to build that back up and while you're in that environment you're not going to be able to build it up properly but like being aware of the fact that what you're in is not okay once you start to see that it's not okay and you 
realize that it's not okay then like it's kind of a back and forth a back and forth thing in your own mind of deciding that you deserve more which takes some time and at the start I didn't even realize that it was abuse because of the things he would say it kind of made me feel like I was exaggerating or being over the top and like it wasn't that bad. He, he literally would tell me that it's not that bad. He would be like, I haven't given you a black eye, so it's not that bad kind of thing. So I started to believe that it wasn't that bad. But for somebody to put their hands on you, that is abuse. And it doesn't even need to be physical for it to be abuse. If somebody's insulting you, like they're supposed to be in love with you. So if they're insulting you, that's not love, that's abuse. And if they're controlling the finances, that's abuse, you know? Like I think being aware of the fact that it actually is abuse is so, so important because when you're in it, you doubt yourself in so many areas of your life that you don't even register that it's not okay. So. I think just really like I would watch certain videos as well to try and um, like while I was in it to try and remind myself that this is not okay and stuff and it took a lot of um, like reading certain quotes and tweets and video like YouTube videos and things just to kind of remind myself because you can kind of think about your life before you even met them so I kind of went back and forth in my own mind just trying to figure out what my life was like it hit rock bottom where it's like what is life if this is all that life is then what is this <laughs> why am I hearing this you know so I think that questioning is like the starting point questioning what you're doing with your life why you're here what this is like why is life so sh- I was gonna swear then <laughs> why is life so bad um can really help you to start to seek more and seek to understand yourself and also the circumstances that you're in and everything like only you can do it for yourself unfortunately nobody can pull you out of it they can try and they can support you they can encourage you to leave and be there for you and listen to you when you like are upset and you need somebody to speak to but it's you that has to walk away like it's you that has to cut them off it's you that has to leave the house and move somewhere else you know so only you can do it for yourself and that really requires um believing in yourself and coming to terms with the fact that this is abuse and this is not okay and that you deserve something so so much better and so so much more and just really coming to terms with that and then being able to work on your own self-esteem and also all of the things that you do actually want like what does what does your dream life look like because I guarantee it's not this and it's not the way that they're treating you you know and also for family and friends like I had family members that were kind of um, like blunt with it, I guess you could say, just kind of like, not. it's not about support. It was more, they were just like, leave, just leave, you know? And there, there was no like emotion behind it. And I understand where they're coming from, but in my opinion, that just doesn't help. Like if um, if a family member is telling you that it's, that the person's not good enough for you or trying to just um, insult the person that you're with, like the abusive person that you're with, it, it really doesn't help because you're already feeling worthless and you feel like they're your whole life. So if you've got family then insulting them, it's like they're insulting you and like they're insulting your choices and insulting your life. So for me it just didn't help it made me feel worse and it made me not even want to go to my family and not want to see them because I was already dealing with like such a stressful situation and environment so to then go and see your family and have them constantly tell you that this person's not good enough and insult them and then you have to jump to their defense and stuff it makes it more stressful it just kind of adds to your stressful life that's already going on you know so I think it's better in my opinion for um family to just be there like you don't even need to say anything you just be there just like listen basically and when when we know that there's a safe space for us to go to like I knew with my mum I could go to her and tell her and even though she would be upset and angry 
I knew that she wouldn't direct that at me, if that makes sense. So I think create you know that you can turn to that person and then they're not going to judge they're not going to belittle or insult or even insult the other person they're just going to be there for you that like that for me is really important so hopefully that helps somebody else as well if you're trying to support um somebody that you know that's going through it it's just to be there because they need to know that they have that safe space to go to without judgment like you're already getting judged by the person that you're with because they're already telling you that you're not good enough so you don't need more judgment from other people so yeah i think i have covered everything <laughs> um but yeah if there's anything else that you want me to touch on any questions you have then you can fire away <laughs> No, honestly, I find that, like, I think that's so helpful, like, especially because I've got that now, I'm going to send that off to the people, like, uh, everyone else. Yeah. But I think it's helpful because it gives you a whole other perspective. Like, even when you're watching it, say, I know it sounds stupid, but even watching something on EastEnders where you think, God, that's horrible. I can't believe that happens to people. But it mm -hmm. does happen to people. And then you can talk to someone like you who's a real person who you can really, you can still see, like, obviously you've come out of it the other side like you but it's really an interesting perspective to be able to see and to have from, yeah. from someone else yeah EastEnders was actually like it's so triggering and I know that it probably triggered yeah. a lot of people because I did watch it and my mom paused it and was like are you okay <laughs> because it is quite triggering and obviously the direction that they took that storyline in as well is quite brutal but it yeah. happens constantly like all the time and it does get to that point of severity so it's yeah. a needed message yeah <laughs> hi um i just wanted to do something with you uh, um and um i am doing like a final year project on radio and i want to like uh do it about this topic so would it be fine if i like use a piece of what you have said of your like your voice in like my assignment like yeah of course absolutely okay. that's amazing yeah <laughs> i don't know if i have any more questions i think you covered everything <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> no yeah that is very helpful i think yeah yeah <laughs> well I hope it helps somebody but yeah I think it definitely will I think that the the like the thing you said about your mum like everyone's got that person they know they can talk to like that's me with my dad like I know anything anything is wrong I can talk to him and I know he won't be angry at me yeah and I think having that person of support is so because even you know even like you know everyone's got that friend they can tell everything to Mm -hmm. but some some things you just feel like you can't and obviously with something this this serious it's like it's that like important to know that like you could be that person to somebody yeah well. so like to keep that in mind when people are telling you things you could be kind of like their like their last hope or like exactly yeah because you never know how long somebody's been in that kind of situation for no. at all and it doesn't even have to be family. It can be anyone. Like sometimes it's easier to talk to a person that's like an acquaintance. That you hardly do now. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely important. And I, I also think actually it's important to know that I do um, have therapy now as well. Although she's more of like a spiritual um, therapist. It's not traditional, but that has really helped as well with processing things because afterwards there's a lot of... Um, like emotional work and you can trace it back to childhood like yeah. certain it's more about a belief system that gets you into these kind of situations rather than um like it's not like you attract it and you deserve it or anything like that but it's just low self-esteem depression like being unhappy with your life being uncertain about yourself those kind of things can definitely be more of an easy target to somebody that's quite manipulative yeah. so yeah and, like and you, stuff. you don't sorry. have to, sorry <laughs> you don't have to like like not fix yourself like 
you don't have to do that alone like no and there's no shame in getting health as well I think that's the thing for a lot of people like it's literally it's not embarrassing to to ask for help or anything like that like no, we all need help because we're all struggling with so yeah, many different things with something and even if like abusive people were to seek help they wouldn't become abusive like because they obviously have their own traumas and for whatever reason that they start being cruel to other people like if everybody was to do that we would have less awful people (laughs) in the world yeah so (laughs) well thank you very much so welcome thank you for inviting me (laughs) I really really appreciate you giving up your time (laughs) no it's honestly it's so good to be here and I'm like it's really really good that you're talking about these things yeah yeah thanks a lot um I think it's like so important to have people like you um like you yeah it's definitely needed there's a lot of stigma around it so it's really cool to be here and talk about it thank you (laughs) yeah (laughs) thank you very much you're welcome thank you (laughs) Lucia do you want me to send you the the audio yeah that would be great yeah Yeah. I can post it on my um my social media and stuff as well yeah no problem (laughs) thank you so much thank you bye bye thank you Bye.